Oh, hell yeah, man. This is my jam. It's a sensation. But most importantly, Chainsaw Man is one of the biggest anime phenomenons that I have ever seen. And on the first day of the anime being released, the thing that was trending the most was the opening. Even the show's character designer, Kazutaka Sugiyama, told people to watch the opening endlessly. The opening. Not the anime. The opening. So I'm going to be opening this three-part series with the opening of Chainsaw Man. I'm making my boy Sugiyama proud. Woo! But after this video, I'm going to be working on the anime. But it won't be my next video. I'll be working on it. And then for the endings, I'm going to be doing a video on every single ending for when that happens. Now that I've told you about my future projects, it's now time to talk about the present one. <laughs> Chainsaw Man's opening, and this is why it is practically perfect. God damn, this opening just knows what it's doing. And one of them is getting me wet. Well then, let's talk about the first half of the opening. The song, Kick Back by Kenshi Yonezu. The song is just so dense, heavy, jagged, intense, but somehow it feels grounded. Like it's in its home place and feels understandable. And all of that mixed together makes grounded chaos. And that is the basis of the song. Just like how when we see a devil in the show, it represents chaos, wanting to kill people, cause destruction, and steal cats? Now that's just, oh, that is evil. But with our main cast, they represent grounded chaos. We see that from when they have all moved in together. They feel like a home to us when we're watching the show, but they are also chaotic pieces of shits. And that is shown in the song from Kenshi Yonezu's grounded, raspy, confident singing voice, like the main cast, to the intense, chaotic instruments in the background, like the devils, we can see how they correlate with each other, the song with the anime. Well, it makes sense, because the song was literally created for the anime, that, that, like, bruh. And the opening is actually completely different to the full song. The full song is unstable. Unstable chaos. Now, why is that? Well, for starters, this happens. No, this is not just in the music video. It's in the proper song. So that would actually catch people off guard and get them to potentially not like it because it changes the entire flow of the song. I don't have a problem with it. I actually really love the sporadicness of it. But because of this massive change of flow in the song, we get to hear Kenshi Yonezu's pure vocals and that got me wanting to listen to him more and more. And then I discovered this, Jim Lemon. God damn, I'm in love with his voice. Oh! But these pure vocals from Yonezu are just so beautiful to- ah! Holy shit, are you okay? Hey, now we're back to what we're used to. Ah, I love it. It makes me think, makes me confused. It's great. This song is just pure, unstable chaos done correctly. Thank you for this fantastic song. I specifically love this part right here. Just being able to hear his raw vocals is just jaw dropping. But with this unstable chaos, what is Yonezu trying to tell us? He's telling us that he's requesting for a better life that includes love, luck, and happiness. Which is exactly like Denji. He's living a rough life where he dreams of eating a peanut butter and jam sandwich. Seriously, that's one of his dreams. It's the small things that is normal for many of us, which is a dream for Denji. The fact that Yonezu managed to portray the anime so well in the song is just so superb and I love it so much. I can't wait to be listening to this song over and over again for how good it is. Okay, okay, okay. So now it's time for me to talk about the other half of the opening. I just talked about how the audio sounds so fascinating. Now it's time to talk about how the visuals look so spectacular. References, animation, composition, and editing. 
These are the three things I'm going to talk about that makes this opening visually stimulating for me. And the first one is the references. There are so many references scattered throughout this opening that it will get any movie watcher, just like the manga kid Tatsuki Fujimoto, excited for seeing a reference. It would make them want to try to pick up on as many as possible, and I managed to find a few which even got me excited. And the ones that I noticed were Fight Club, Reservoir Dogs, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Big Lebowski, and then this. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, baby! Hot goddamn diggity dog! My confidence after knowing that skyrocketed all the way up to the moon. Uh, but I was wrong. It was a dance to Soda, We're Alive from Morning Musume, which is sampled in the opening song, Kickback. There are just many references in this opening which feed the craving movie maniacs with joy. But there are also references to other pieces of media as well, like Tatsuki Fujimoto's iconic explosion, the divine comedy, and Denji crashing three times into buildings after getting knocked into the air. The holes his body makes look like the letters C, S, M, which stand for Chain Saw Man. Whoa, who would have known? But there are also parts that foreshadow events in the anime. The Luko Chloridian Parasite infests slugs, eye stalks, and it mind controls them, which is just like Makima, who is very manipulative and wants to control Denji. And with the fly trap, which captures small insects and traps them in with its small bristles, which makes it so that the prey can't get out and it slowly gets dissolved through the fluids of the fly trap. Which is just like Makima, capturing Denji and trying to make it so he can't escape from her grasp. Then we have Power's titties, which are a driving factor for Denji's character development, which isn't a joke. I just find the references so fascinating and how that alone has captivated many people to watch the show and can make this opening iconic for the future. Okay. I am a noob when it comes to talking about animation. I need to do a lot of research on it and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it looks pretty. So I'm gonna try my best to talk about it. So if I do get anything wrong, please correct me down below, please, please. And these are the animations that I like. Denji moving at the start just flows so effortlessly. The way that his face moves is just like a human. Just look at his eyes, his mouth, his eyebrows. They all move in such a human way. But his mouth is the most impressive aspect of this shot. Cause look at how that tongue moves. It's too good, too good. It's such a small detail, but it just makes it look so goddamn realistic. The next one is with Denji holding Pachita with his wavering hair and shorts. I just love how they think of every bit of detail. And it's like that with the Denji boner head scene. The saw is erecting through his skull. The blood and sweat is trickling down his face. It's just so amazing. And speaking of amazing, this lineless part. Is that what you called it? It looks lineless to me, you know what I mean? But this part here is so chaotic that I love it. It's just like Denji, so out of line. He's not in the classic line like everyone else is. He's in his own one, a lineless one. But how does it flow so well and look so fluid whilst having no construct around it? It's seriously just like Denji getting out of control and I love it. Boogie, 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 wee! Shimmy, 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 wah! Dancey, 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 woo! Who doesn't love our future devil dancing? Ooh. Whoever animated this is epic because the reflections and refractions coming from the water below the wavering trees and wiggly woggling devil are absolutely superb. That's someone with talent right there that knows how reflections and refractions work and they showed us their talent. Now since I'm talking about dancing, let's talk about the magnificent job of the attention to detail on Denji and power dancing. The creases in the clothing, the motion blur on the hands, the dancing hair on Denji and power, and how their shadows are dancing on Aki. All these small attentions to detail is what makes the scene stand out a lot. But if you look at the shadows on Aki, you can see how much detail got put into it. Just look at all the gaps from their shadows and also the soft lighting that you also see on Aki's leg. It's just one small thing that you don't notice, but it makes it a lot more realistic. I promise you that in the future I'll be doing a lot more research onto animation, it's just this is my first time talking about it and uh, let me know what you thought of how I did. Hopefully I did good. Now the composition and editing in this is really great. There's great use of depth of blur, lighting and ambience, and I'll be talking about each one once for this upcoming segment. 
So for our blur, we have the rack focus when the camera is tracking across the characters on the street. It's telling us who to focus on and it gives us space between the characters so we don't get lost and know who to focus on. The lighting in this is so surreal. For example, with the Denji Abona head scene, we can see different layers of lighting happening throughout the one second shot. You can see how the movement of his head affects the lighting on his face. From parts of his face going from hard light to soft light to pure shadow. It's also like that with his hair how the lighting is reflecting off of the ceiling. You can see how the soft light from that moves within his hair. From every shot in this opening, you can feel the atmosphere of a place, the ambience. From light particles, to dust clouds, to sparks, to the bloom of light, all the way to cigarette smoke. There's just so much of it that makes each scene feels like it has its own atmosphere. When we're seeing Denji and Power dancing in the final shot, the traffic light across the road from them is flashing and it gives that shot that little bit of extra life that is needed and it fills the atmosphere up and gives it more character. Now there's a difference between a good opening and a great opening. A good opening is visually or audibly appealing. But a great or even amazing opening tells a story and it fits the themes of the show. And that is exactly what this opening did. It was showing us what the show would be like through every aspect that was given to us. And they did that in a visually and audibly stimulating essence. And that's what makes this opening practically perfect to me and maybe even you. It's definitely gonna be an iconic opening in the future for sure. But what was your favorite part to the opening and why? Comment down below. My favorite part was indeed the song. It got me to discover a new artist who I'd love to make future videos on. I might make one on Lemon. Who knows? And yeah, that's me talking about the first part of my Chainsaw Man series. I hope you enjoyed and definitely subscribe for my future parts for this series and for other content as well. And uh, yeah, other than that, peace.